First impression, big. That's pretty much the only word that describes it. Really flipping big. It's just a monster. Man, this is gonna be a mission, a proper mission. As soon as Alex Huber showed me a picture of this route that he'd climbed, I was just totally drawn towards it. I could tell it was an absolutely perfect sort of challenge that I'm looking for at the moment. It's just got this amazing amount of climbing. It's got massive exposure, beautiful scenery, the right kind of climbing that I'm looking for. So I just couldn't get it out of my mind. Once it was in there, there was just no escape from it. Pull off there. Alex made the first ascent of this route back in February this year and he could not stop talking about it. He just said it was like one of the best routes he'd ever climbed. He went on and on and on. And I looked at the pictures and thought, wow, that is some route. That just looked absolutely mind blowing. So the first day started pretty well. I didn't go according to plan. So my plan was to just work my way up the 8A plus pitch, just hang on the quick draws, get a feel for it, remember all the moves, make sure I was slick, and then red point it. But of course, as soon as I set off, I just couldn't stop climbing it. It was just so good, the climbing, and kind of pushed myself a little bit on site today, which is good, that was a bonus, but I knew straight away, like, come on, like, what have you done now? You've, you've on sighted it, you've climbed it, you can't remember any of the moves. So I then had to go and practice it again so I can remember how to climb it. So yeah, off to a great start. Kind of good start, kind of bad start at the same time. And then we went up the second pitch, 8B plus pitch. Oh, yeah, I worked my way up that, it's hard, that is crimpy, it's intense, it's quite short to be honest, it's like a peak route in, in the UK, um, but, but awesome. Okay, take it there. Yep, please. Right. Good old in there. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard, isn't it? <laughs> pretty steep. Yeah, it's, it's flipping steep here. Yeah. Uh, just a touch of slack, I'll clip the next one as well. It's, it's just hard to work out where you're going. I think I go halfway up. It can't be bad, first day. Halfway, I'll take that. This is where it looks like there's some bolts missing. <laughs> it sort of split and I couldn't work out which way to go. And I was thinking, does it go right? Does it go left? I've, I've got no topo, I've got no information. I feel like it might look easier to go right. Wow, this is pretty wild swinging around and the rocks uh, is a little bit sketchy in places but not too bad maybe i guess <laughs> so at the point of the split it, i kind of felt like it might be easier to go right yeah. it looked better to go straight <sighs> but there was a bolt with no hanger on it it's usually a giveaway so i thought i'm going to try going right maybe it's going to be the way to go and it went on and on and on and it was so far out and the drag was ridiculous and the rope was zigzagging around two furs and Ethan couldn't hear me at all and I was shouting for slack and I, <laughs> well, I feel like there's something's occurred on this last 8B plus pitch. Couldn't pull the rope through and it was such an epic and I got to the anchor after ages and it wasn't very inspiring. Two bolts, bit of rubbishy rope between them, old snap gate. I thought, oh, this doesn't look right. He was at to reverse a section of climbing. As Ethan couldn't hear me, I was shouting out, take it in, so unclipping the bolt. And, yeah, we'll find out in a minute. Traversing across and the loop of slack was like literally 10 metres of slack down and he couldn't hear me to take it in. It's now like half past four. Yeah, I've been on the wharf quite a while. Do like a okay, take it tight. Nice ah. treat or something, a little snack. So I was like <laughs> looking at a massive fall, reversing this like 8B plus pitch was horrendous, it's horrible. Yeah, it's really hard to hear you, Steve. Sorry. Finally got back to the junction and then climbed up from there. And it was amazing moves, but very hard. Like really very hard. Like some of the moves that I thought okay, I, set I, off. I, think I can do this move. Climbing. After yep. a while, right. maybe work some sequences out. 
finally got to the anchor, totally destroyed, skin gone, like starting to get cramp in my fingers, they were like closing up, biceps were cramping, just annihilated. Clipped the anchor there, left all the quick draws in and just got the hell out of there and just basically gave up. That was the end of day two. There's a, two lines on this wall basically, as far as we can tell. There's the route from Alex, Lab Avares, and then there's an unread pointed route called Nike and they kind of join and split apart and it's really hard to work out what's going on. The individual grades might not look too hard. We've got an 8A plus at the start, then we've got an 8B plus, then an 8B, and then another 8B plus. Yeah, some people might think that I might be able to climb those kind of grades, and yeah, I think I probably can, but that level, like one after the next, after the next, after the next, is, is really gonna be a stretch. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could do one, then have a rest day, and do another one, and have a rest day. Yeah, I could probably manage that. But all of them in one day, or even in one trip, it's gonna be a mega challenge. Things started off not as well as what I'd hoped. Kind of wanted to feel fresh and bouncy. That didn't feel right. But it was a bit humid, and the ATA Plus at the bottom kicked my ass, to be honest. I mean, I, I got up it, but I felt as though I had to really work. Straight away, I was on the back foot, <laughs> thinking, oh man, this is going to be a fight. the wrong way. Was it? I don't I can't even tell anymore. <sighs> the next pitch, the 8B plus pitch, felt hard. I'd already red pointed that a few days earlier, but then this time it, it felt way harder. Oh, that felt tough today. Ah, it was so much harder the other day. I think it's just really humid. Uh, those small crimps, oh man, I'm knackered. Two pitches up. Uh, oh well, at least two pitches up. Whew. Good pitch though. Oh, skin's a bit shredded. It's interesting the way that I think climbing and performance like moves in different pathways. Sometimes you find yourself, you're doing maybe a lot of sport climbing, then maybe you're doing a lot of bouldering. At the moment, I just feel as though I'm doing a lot of this kind of twofer style of climbing. Maybe I didn't really plan it, it's just the way it's worked out. And maybe at the moment I'm climbing at my absolute best at this style. Oh, didn't find this position last time. I can really feel like the last two pitches just compounding now and uh, I just feel totally beaten up. I think two days climbing then a rest day and then climbing again it, it kind of wasn't enough recovery for an old geezer like me. <laughs> oh, I can't remember what to do. I'm sure there's something weird here. Um, Oh. 
And then I was left with this dilemma, which way do I go? There was the <sighs> Huber 8B Plus version, which was work to some extent. I knew kind of what I was doing, but it had no quick draws in anymore. Or there was the unclimbed version, which is definitely harder, but it was definitely better. So which way to go? I think I kind of already knew I was gonna go for the better version. It's like the ultimate prize, but it was a gamble. Because I reckon if I dropped it, it was game over. It takes the full challenge and the moves are just insane. They're just so out there. And I, I, I kind of wanted to get involved. You know, I, I wanted to climb that pitch. Fuck, I can't remember what to do. Jesus! <laughs> oh my God. In my foot. Holy shit! <laughs> Whoa, that was insane! <laughs> oh my god! Man, that was amazing! I had fully flipping fight there, improvisation. I've, I've been up here, but you never know. <laughs> I certainly didn't know. Oh my God, that was crazy. That move down there, that sort of weird rollover. But what was that? <laughs> I don't know what that even was. Oh, that was such a cool piece of climbing. What a fight. Man, I nearly dropped it. <laughs> so I nearly dropped it. Did I deserve that? I don't know whether I deserved that, but I'll take it. <sighs> okay, let me get myself safe while I can still think. I mean, they say you make your own luck to a certain extent, and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't get lucky. And there's no doubt that on that last hard pitch, the really hard pitch, I got really lucky on there. I could tell I was really lucky. And there was a wind, I just scraped it and I 
felt as if I was right on the knife edge. But then the next couple of pitches that followed there, I felt as though my look was starting to unravel really quickly. The long traverse out left, which we had been told was maybe not too bad, still unclimbed, and we we're on site now. And it turned out to be hard, like 8-8, eight, eight, just scraped that by the skin of my teeth. And then a long traverse back right again, hard, 7B plus, crimpy sharp stuff. And then the finale was a really technical 7C plus pitch. But that took me right to the top of the crag, sit down on the summit, massive view below. What a finish, what a route. Topping out, it's, there's a bit of relief in there, but it was an amazing feeling because there's something about this route, it's, it's big and it's pretty special and it's probably the most out there route that I've ever done. So to actually to get it ticked and to do it in a one in one day with no falls was man, it's, it's up there. It's right up there in the top of the pile of one of the best routes I've ever done.